And we're back. If you missed the first part of this Q&A series of videos, you shouldn't have too much trouble finding it. I'll include a link to it though in the video description below. There really was too much to squeeze comfortably into a single video, hence video number two. And apologies in advance if you've asked a good question and I've not mentioned it in these videos. Unfortunately, not all of them can make it in. That's just how it is because of the volume and that sort of thing. So I am paying attention to it. I'm trying to include everything, but obviously some stuff is simply going to slip through the cracks. But getting right to the Q&A, Loki clarified the release schedule for mobile 1.3 platforms. Loki wrote, Google Play and iOS at launch, Amazon later. And he said that before, but I thought it was worth clarifying. Next, a question about pricing. Valorum wrote, will the price be raised? Presumably, speaking of mobile 1.3, once it's out, will it be a more expensive product in light of how much more content there will be? Loki's answer, not that I know of. So there you go. Valorum had another question though. He wrote, Loki, will we have to make a new character for the update? The answer, no you will not. And as they've said, you don't have to recreate the character. In fact, you can use worlds from 1.2 or earlier. The only drawback, of course, is if you're not using the new world gen, then you won't get things like the marble biome and stuff that's being added with 1.3. You'll be stuck with the older material. So if you want to get the full 1.3 experience and certainly the larger worlds in mobile 1.3, you're going to want to create a new world after the patch. Moving along, Jose Rosado wrote, Is spawn rate increased? I mean, on the current version, there are about 10 enemies at once on the screen at a time. Loki answered that. He wrote, It should match the PC. So any differences are now being eliminated. It should track the PC. I suppose that means that DR Studios is really when they're recoding this from the ground up, they're really tracking what the PC version does. Another question came from Texugo Rivoso. How many players can you play in a world? Loki's response, eight players is the max for multiplayer at the moment. Although DR Studios are exploring 16 down the road, as you can see from the user interface being built for that possibility. I have to say hats off to any observant viewer who had noticed that. I certainly hadn't noticed that in the stream or other content that's been shared thus far, but evidently that was revealed indirectly through earlier postings. Anyway, let's continue with a question about a controller setup that's kind of amusing to visualize. Pinhead Pat wrote, Wait Loki, you know how everyone keeps on saying that when will controller support come to Terraria Mobile? But will we ever have keyboard and mouse support? Mm -hmm. Loki wrote, I don't see keyboard and mouse on mobile being an urgent priority. Much bigger fish to fry. Now, I will say, despite Loki's answer, which I get, I do still get the love for mouse and keyboard. I love mouse and keyboard. I got started on PC gaming at a young age, and this, I find it a very good control scheme. But next, a rather random request, and one that actually got us a screenshot. Alex wrote, Loki, can you show us the main menu of 1.3 mobile? And he did, Loki wrote main menu for whatever reason. Hey, we don't need a reason, do we? Here's the menu. This is why it never hurts to ask. So thank you, Alex. We've got a nice screenshot of the main menu. So there you go, if you were curious. Loki answered another question from Texugo with the following. Here is one for you that I don't think anyone has seen before. A new list of languages. And here's what Loki shared. I had thought that the language packs that came in a later PC patch would take a while to come to Terraria Mobile. But it seems that they're actually kind of one step ahead of the PC schedule in terms of the release. They have said it's going to track the PC 1.3.0.7. I thought all of this stuff came after that, but maybe I'm wrong. At any rate, 
those are the languages that they seem to have in place for mobile 1.3. So hats off to ReLogic and DR, of course. But moving and changing gears, in discussing people potentially cheesing the Moon Lord fight, the Moon Lord obviously being the bosses or the final boss of the game, Loki wrote, the worst of the nurse cheese will be gone. No more, let me make a platform with a small lazy box with the nurse inside and just auto pause heal every time I am low on HP versus the Moon Lord. Yeah, you can talk to her, but the game won't pause. That is how people cheese it the hardest, so both she and you will be taking hits while you try to heal. You can use the nurse, you just can't rely on auto pause to make it a leisurely thing. So sorry guys, no cheesing the Moon Lord. You're going to have a tougher fight on your hands, um, but you know, it's probably for the best. Another user had a question about the supposed flight of users from the Terraria player base. Texugo, who we've heard from already, wrote Loki, many people are giving up Terraria. Should this be alarming? Loki's answer, only if they don't want to play an amazing game and update. They are lost really, if you mean mobile. If you mean PC, I would say the numbers disagree with your assessment. And that is all with an extended time between PC updates. I would say expect another massive spike when 1.4 hits, maybe even bigger than 1.3. Now I hadn't heard anything about a huge departure of gamers from Ter Terraria. If anything, the community seems rather healthy. I don't know how it would compare to maybe a spike from two years ago, but judging by the population on Discord, overall sales, the inclusion of Switch gamers, it seems to be doing just fine. But speaking of Terraria 1.4, which is, as you may know, also known as the Journey's End patch, Loki also wrote, 1.2 was bigger for what it meant, as in everyone had assumed Terraria was done after 1.1, and then it wasn't. Journey's End 1.4 is pretty darn huge itself. And he's right about that. I think he actually wrote in relation to that separately that there are about 800 new items. So it is a gargantuan content patch. Uh, I will say going back to Terraria 1.2 after I'd taken a long break from an earlier version of the game was a huge and very pleasant surprise. It was almost like playing a new game. And then 1.3 hit after that. And it's really hard to overstate how much broader the game seems in its scope compared to the earlier versions like 1.2 and especially 1.1. But regarding the mobile crowd's reaction to mobile 1.3, Loki wrote the following. I am almost certain that there will be vocal negative folks early on about the changes and having to deal with the adjustment and learning period. But we will see if they change their tune like everyone else does after a few hours. And of course, any further tweaks. He continued this thought elsewhere with, I enjoy it, that's all I can say. Mobile is second behind PC for me now. It used to be a distant, and I mean a distant last place. Contrast that with my spending like 160 hours on mobile 1.3. And not all of that just testing things. So clearly, Loki is a fan, even though apparently he wasn't much of a fan with Mobile 1.2. Take that for what it's worth. Now, in response to a comment about the Enigma video or mystery video that was posted recently in Relogic's YouTube channel, Loki wrote, The presence of this video does not affect the timing of the update. Now, if you have no idea what this Enigma video I'm talking about actually is, then check out the Enigma video link in the video description below, because it's very neat. Anonymic wrote, How long after release do you figure control customizations and the light will start showing up, Loki? Loki wrote, No idea. Focus will be hot fixes first. And as he has said elsewhere, Admittedly, without being in a position to give timing specifics, the order of operations is going to be hot fixes, 
then customizing controls, then on to hopefully future content patches for mobile. Anyway, I'll wrap up with a comment from Scoop God who wrote, NRLP is stalking this chat right now. Hey, in my defense, I actually wasn't, at least not this time. So thanks to all of those who had alerted me to Loki's appearances on Discord. I do appreciate it. Even if I don't have the time to reply back to you, I do appreciate it. Uh, I'm obviously not always around, so I like to get alerted when he's on. You guys are my eyes and my ears sometimes, so thanks again. And thanks to everyone who watched. Uh, that's it for now. It was part two. As you can see, it's, it was probably too big for a single video. Anyway, I'm sure Loki will be back and I'll have to make more videos because he seems to be the uh, Johnny on the spot at the moment in terms of answering everyone's questions. So he may have another video or two worth of content coming out in the next few days and certainly coming out within the week, I would imagine, is the August state of the game. So that promises to be a very interesting update and I'm really optimistic about what they're going to share on that. So stay tuned everyone. Thanks again for watching. I'll see you next time.